Good evening. This is Shippa Khan, and welcome to the Otherworldly Show. It's a weekly show brought to you by the Changing Times, Changing Worlds Conference, where we share topics that are uh, anything spooky foo. If it's uh, divination, magic, complementary and alternative healing, ghosts, or other energetic beings, uh, spiritual practices, uh, whatever we want to to help uh, help understand that. In context, today we are talking about what it's like to live in a haunted house, because if you believe the media, uh, it would be a case of, oh my gosh, it's horror, it's, 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 there's a ghost, quick, get an exorcist, you know, get the Ghostbusters, you know, who are you going to call? Go call the Warrens, um, but not unlike in the TV show Supernatural, where they define anything uncanny as uh, demonic. <laughs> the Warrens seem to do that too. Um, uh, we are, I started looking at things I'm going to put into the chat, uh, uh, some books that I, I would recommend. Uh, one of them is uh, the House of Darkness, House of Light. If you remember hearing of, or seeing, the movie The Conjuring, uh, that was a movie uh, based on a true story about a um, family that moved into a haunted house. And what, what they did to the story, in my opinion, ought to be considered criminal. They made it a lot more exciting and added witches and scary, dangerous stuff. Uh, one of my favorite bits in it was where uh, occasionally they would walk in through the dining room door and you know, the doors are liminal areas and they would suddenly see a scene, same room, different century. And the people would look up and go, can you see that? And they back off and go back to being their normal dining room. They had simply changed centuries. And presumably the people in the 19th century or 18th century dining room were seeing them as a ghost, which is, is kind of cool. And they had other similar, but not, not particularly spooky to them experiences. If you're used to it, one of the things they do that say their a guest would say, the phone is ringing. It's like, uh, didn't, it only rang once, we're not going to bother. The receiver is picked up and it's floating in the air. Oh, it'll put itself back down. And if it misses, we'll put it back on. And that bothered some people, but it didn't bother them because they were used to it. Um, a ghost usually is simply your annoying, invisible roommate. Our, uh, you know, other words, I, I said, uh, other books that we have are, are uh, the haunt. And so House of Darkness, House of Light is the family that got together later and wrote what really happened. And it's not as exciting, but it's very interesting. Uh, the Haunted is uh, Owen Davis. This is if you are a scholar like I am, you, you like it's history of haunting. Uh, then if you are less of a scholar, but you still like a bit of this and that and everything, Rosemary Guiley did her usual thing of picking up all the stories from everywhere and collecting them. Uh, the Pagan Book of the Dead by Claude Luc Coteau is another scholarly examination of the history. Of. And if you want to go into history, one of the very early books is Phantasms of the Living, which was written by uh, Gurney Myers and Podmore. And I think that was in 1911 that came out. Also, I enjoy Fate Magazine which is mostly the content is what people send into them. And so it's a lot of first person stories. I'm going to share a not mine story first. As a friend of mine told me about his uh, experience. I, I'm assuming that just about everybody has heard the traditional American story of the hitchhiking story a ghost who leaves her sweater in the car and the person takes it back to the house they dropped them off at. Have we all heard that one? And, and anybody not heard it? <laughs> anyway, apparently it happened to a friend of mine. And so he 
picked up a hitchhiker, dropped it at her house, came, took the, turned around, took the sweater back to the house. And instead of the usual, oh my God, uh, she died several years ago. She got a, um, there was a very old woman who opened the door and saw the sweater and said, oh, I'm sorry, she's done it again. Would you like a cup of coffee? I'll explain what happened. <laughs> Apparently, she's been doing this every year for 30 years now, and the, her mother has gotten old and is no longer alarmed by it, but simply feels that she needs to console the poor people who have picked her up. Now, I do have a... It's in my family. It didn't happen to me. Semi-first-person story of another ghost, not in a house, but in a car. My sister, when she was 16, she'd just gotten her license. And she got to take the car out. And it was maybe of her first time that night uh, to, to drive at night. The key part of that was she didn't know how to use, turn the lights on in the car. Uh, and she was driving along and she looked over and there's a guy sitting in the seat, in the passenger seat. And she freaked, stopped the car, jumped out, looked into the car and there's nobody there. So she looked all the way around the car, under the car, got back in, closed the door, and the guy's there again. And she opened the door, and the light came on, and the guy disappeared. And so she opened and shut the door a couple times, and when the light was on, she couldn't see anything. And when the light was off, there was this guy sitting in the car, pretty much ignoring her. Um, unfortunately, she didn't know how to turn the lights on and off. So she drove the rest of the way home with her foot holding the car door just enough open to keep the light on so that she wouldn't have to see him. And when she got home and uh, closed the door, he wasn't there anymore. I think he just had to keep, he was hitchhiking and he, I, I hope he got where he wanted to go. That, those are not atypical ghost stories. Other things that have happened in our house, we frequently saw doorknobs turning. I would assume that if a doorknob turns, it had been incompletely turned and it was simply that some nudge happened and it was going back into a, the place it would it should rest, except when it turns more than uh, 90 degrees and then it turns back in the other direction and then it turns back in the other direction so that you're getting a lot of movement. I'm more willing to think that something's turning the knob. Other things that happened in our house was out at the cottage, we frequently would hear walking steps upstairs, up, up in the loft and up in the, in the second floor. And occasionally I would hear the creaking of the springs. We had the old spring uh, beds that, that, you know, bed would, where you'd have a mattress on a, on a steel springs and, uh, we could hear that. Now, why a ghost would need to go to bed except by habit, I don't know. Uh, but we would hear that. That was not an uncommon thing that we would hear. Um, and yes, some of them do go from habit. Uh, the most exciting ghost story we had. Now, I'm going to start with a more humorous one. Uh, my younger sister uh, was in, put on, on the third floor. Always the young kids get the higher, you know, they have to deal with more stairs. Um, it spooked her. One night she had a sleepover and they heard a knocking on the wall and bang, 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 bang. And, uh, and they said, what should we do? And, and she said, uh, lock the door. So she got locked the door, got back in bed. Can, that's it. What do we do now? Well, scream. Well, what should we scream? Help. So they started screaming, help, 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 daddy, help, Mr. Richards. Well, in 10 seconds or so, dad hit the door at full speed. And of course, it was locked. <laughs> and the door locked. He said, Who's there? He said, Who the heck do you think is there? It's your father. And uh, when he heard that it was just banging on the wall, uh, he went back to bed and mom had to take them down, give them cocoa and calm them down. I heard the noise came down and I, even then that was a interested in the paranormal. I said, well, how many knocks was it? And they said, four, four, five. And I said, well, then you have nothing to worry about because uh, you, it's only the death knock if there's three knocks. 
Well, that apparently set them off again. And my mother used to retell the story with me saying, three is the death knock. It's like, no, I was being very reassuring and uh, and explaining from a position of knowing more about it than they did. But that didn't make as good a story for my mother. So <laughs> at any rate, unsurprisingly, my little sister suggested that she change rooms with my next older sister who went up there and uh, what the chair in the room was a rocking chair and she would come in and put her books on it and then she would come up and the look over from her de- the desk and the chair would start rocking and a dump of books on the floor and so what did she do she started putting their books on the end of the bed and said there rock that if you can uh which is of course the in my opinion the right the right answer so other things that would happen is things would appear and disappear uh after we had all gone to college my mother put a borrowed book on top of the piano in the foyer and went to grab it to take it back to her friend and it wasn't there and she turned the entire house upside down she went through every book case in the house which is not unlike my house there were a lot of bookcases it she took a month she searched the entire freaking house and then one day it was right back where she'd left it on top of the piano and my father insisted that she'd just not seen it yeah right things appear and disappear things move from one place to another you hear sounds you sometimes smell things uh you feel a presence these are ghosts these are spirits these are uh at one point the term wraith was more uh, popular Lem- lemur or is uh or larva or are the roman terms specter was very popular plural spectrum this is what you get when you're talking to somebody who reads the scholarly books in the 18th century another term they used a lot in the 18th century is hallucination by which they did not mean it was something that wasn't there they were saying you're seeing something that other people weren't seeing uh apparition is still very popular because it appears so apparition we also have to try and differentiate between theories who were very big on making things disappear uh ancestors who uh and and who are essentially ghosts but may not necessarily be attached to the building but more attached to the family poltergeist which is a phenomenon that's associated with ghosts but does not have anything to do with spirits as much as it has to do with uh people uh the usually adolescents people in their teens and otherwise highly stressed uh they are uh so these are there it's it's a little bit difficult to separate out the many different causes of uh invisible roommates who may or may not be annoying <laughs> but who make their presence known and i have a couple more stories but i'd like to invite other people i've already used up 15 minutes but that gives you some idea of of what a ghost story is uh griffin you got your hand up hi um well, i hadn't thought about you know i've never lived in a haunted house i know a couple of other people's ghost stories some of which are interesting but after you got done explaining how things appear and disappear i suddenly realized i don't know that the house is haunted but i think i'm haunted because uh feather stitch will confirm that one of the things that drives me crazy is that i must seem to have an attached roommate who has a thing for tools because i am constantly finding that something i need is gone out of where i last put it and i find it in some highly improbable location and this is separate and apart from simply having forgot where i put it and especially when sometimes these things disappear almost immediately 
And it seems that the more urgently I need the tool, the farther it goes and the longer it stays away. So uh, it's just like one of those multiple realizations that I get by hanging out with this weird crowd is that, oh, all right, I've got one of those annoying roommates too. But it just drives me absolutely nuts because that kind of roommate can really make you think you've lost your mind completely. And at my age, you can't rule that out. Uh, One thing I will say on that one is that I have noticed that the more emotional importance you put on it, whether it is the spool of thread, it is the one spool, the color that you need right now, or whether it is the precious ring or the knife or the whatever that belonged to your grandmother, the more emotional uh, importance that item has, the easier it seems to be for whoever's on the other side to move it over into the next frequency and so it disappears. I, that, that's my observation. It may or may not be true. Anybody else have a comment on Griffin's? Well, Feather Stitch one put one in chat, comment in chat, which is yeah. I relevant. still haven't learned not to hand him things that I that I want him to hold on to and fix, for instance, because um, <laughs> they'll disappear. But I also uh, I'd make, I make I find myself wondering if something on the other side notices the level of importance and then says I better check out what this is so important for, <laughs> and they run off with it to study it. Yeah. Then then let, shall, shall we uh, see? see what um uh michelle you get us you, you have a story okay um i have a cute one that i usually tell the kids to relax them but um i had a, a cat her name was griffin and the guy i was dating at the time she was alive she really didn't like him she baited him she tortured him she'd sleep between us so fast forward many many years later i'm not with this guy but she got really sick and she died in my arms. About two hours later, I get a phone call from my ex saying, did something happen to Griffin? It's like, well, why? He said he he felt a weight on his chest and it felt like a cat and he didn't have one. And he opened up his eyes and it looked like her. (laughs) So she had to get the last word. That's very typical ghost. And many ghosts, people don't realize they saw a ghost. They are so real. They've hugged. They've left items behind. But people don't know that they're ghosts until they find out later that they died just about then. So that that's that's another very, very typical ghost story. Joe, do you? Yeah, I've got a, I've got, I've actually got a few. And um, you sparked my memory of one that this is something that happened with my um, sister-in-law. Now, my my husband's Chinese American, and in their tradition, when someone dies, you hang, um, you cover all the mirrors in the house for at least the first three days because the person's going to still be around. They may be confused, and you don't want them to get scared by seeing themselves or seeing other things, and. Um, They were over, their grandfather had died and they were over at their place. And she came walking down the hall into the living room. And there he was sitting in his chair in the living room when she came into the room. Um, The ones that have actually happened to me, back in the 80s, I worked on something called the World Fantasy Convention, which is actually a convention about horror. and. This one we had in Berkeley at the Claremont Hotel, which if you want to think about the overlook, you know, this is an old wooden great hotel. And um, it actually had one room. It it had ghosts, but it had one that was very particularly, one suite that was very particularly haunted. There was a story the bartender would tell about um, a maid leaving it's screaming, running out, not of just the room, but the hotel, because the furniture had started to rearrange itself as she was cleaning the place. And that's the room, of course, that Peter Straub wanted for the, (laughs) 
but from the fifth floor to the fourth floor, there was um, like a small stairway, probably for hotel staff, so on and so forth. And it went from the fifth floor down to where the ice machine was. I took it once. I got to the landing. And as I approached it, the temperature started to drop. It dropped about 20, I'm sorry, that's my cat, 20 degrees. And I got very clearly, I wasn't wanted there. And so I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. I won't come again. And I left. But, you know, it's like some, some things I just see. The, the only time I've actually seen a ghost was at, um, it was a, a manor house, an old plantation house back east in West Virginia for a conference. And um, I was up very late. I was the only one in my room that was awake. We were on the second floor and there was a balcony, a screened in balcony. And there was this guy that must have been six foot two that came with a, with a top hat on very well dressed he came walking out of the bathroom and went out onto the porch and sat down on the rocker and i saw him clear as day one of the things that i've heard about ghosts is a whole lot of them are simply memories you know you've got somebody that'll come home and then walk up the stairs and so every time at a certain time of night you'll hear somebody come in and walk up the stairs and that's just an imprint just a memory there are other things that can actually affect our realm. Um, I have not directly had experience with, except for things moving around the house and disappearing, but I have always attributed that to the fae I have around me. Um, there's one with, my husband has a story about he had, you know, one of the twiddly winks, one of the things you could toss and then catch. And he did that in his bedroom and it disappeared. It just went up and it never came down. And about six months later, it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, they're all that, that, that's the thing. Your your point about uh impressions, uh have yeah, imprints that having mm -hmm. it be uh, some kind of a something on the ether that that a recording that that is right. one kind that type apparently has been disappearing at a frightening way oh, rate that's sad. which makes it very difficult for uh ghost hunters since the advent of cell phones apparently something about cell phones dissipate that type of imprint that's, that's actually really sad yeah in some ways but on the other hand the kind of, of ghost that is a personality that's hanging around which you're more likely to see in a in an ancestor situation is uh is going to yeah. uh, going to have oh yes the Oh God, yes. Uh, we were in the in the chat. We've got some wonderful references to one wonderful movies and and TV shows. Oh, the Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Yeah, Ghost and Mrs. Muir is, is a favorite. Uh, I've just discovered the uh, TV show Ghosts, and apparently they've also got a better version that was done first in England. The it's more amusing the the uh, that one. But those are our personalities that hang around. Uh, the old unfinished mm -hmm. business part. If you uh, if you have a reason to stay around, you're more likely to hang around. As our medium friends may tell us, they're always able to look in on us if they feel like it, but they may be off doing whatever spiritual thing you do when you're not embodied. Uh, and then if you get a new body, you're probably busy doing that instead of Oh, so I, I do have. A, I, yes, I do John. have one more thing. Oh, goody! And this is this is more uh, with rituals, so I didn't think of it. Uh, 
the year my dad died, Bob's grandmother also passed away. And this will be quick. And so I went to the spiral dance for Samhain that year. Big, huge, about 500 people for a ritual. And the trans workers always going over to Avalon, going over to the Island of the Dead. And on the shore, I didn't see my dad. But my grandmother-in-law, Bob's mother, yeah, Bob's grandmother, came to me and said, you know, your dad's doing fine and you will see him. He just doesn't come from a culture that venerates the dead. And, you know, so he's getting his getting his feet on what's going on and so on and so forth. And you will see him. And he gave me a big hug. That's because, of course, we actually have an altar, a Chinese altar for the dead here at home. But, you know, and Bob's family, they grew up honoring the ancestors and talking with them and so on. Anyway, and now I want to hear, is it Amber? Amber, are you, do you have a story for us? Yeah, yeah. I apologize for not being on camera. I got it. No, that's okay. I got a new phone and I'm still trying to figure out the settings. I, I apologize for that. That's okay. Um, so some of you may know, I am a real estate appraiser. And um, so one, one day I was uh, appraising a property that uh, I went to just after there was a blizzard. And there was probably three or four feet of snow on the ground. And this property had not been um, plowed in any way. So I knew that I was the only one on this property. It was a vacant house. And so my, my uh, process is that I'll start on the outside and take all the exterior photos first. And then I'll go and I'll start in the basement and work my way up because usually when you have property problems, you're going to find them in the basement first. You know, it's all the electrical, all the plumbing, everything's down there. So, um, so I know that I'm the only one there because I'm, I'm walking all around my only footprints in the property in the snow. And so I start inside the door and I got this feeling like somebody was there. So, you know, I'm calling out, hello, praiser, I'm here. You know, if you're vandals, don't kill me. You know? <laughs> I just like, you know, if you're, if you're not supposed to be here, now's a good time to run. You know? <laughs> and so I, um, I start down in the basement and I'm uh, taking pictures of a lot of things that don't show up in the report, but I keep them in my files. One of them is the oil tank. You want to have photos to show that there's no leakage. And so in this case, I'm uh, looking, you know, I, I, I'm, now I just want to say I'm really careful about what I'm looking everywhere. You know, I'm trained to be looking at everything. And I, I just want to emphasize that. I know I don't have to say that for this group, but a lot of times when I tell people this story, they're like, oh, come on, you know, and they try to justify it. But I know what I saw. So I'm looking at the oil tank and above the oil tank is this um, shelf and it's got this broken statue. It's these two angels that are uh, hugging each other and one of them has no head, <laughs> right? And it's in the middle of this shelf. So I'm like, fine. So I look down to my camera. I take the picture. I look up again. This statue is now on the edge of the shelf about to fall off. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's pretty weird. And, and I've had many people say to me, well, you know, come on, you could have just moved it yourself and taken the picture and that doesn't prove anything. And I'm like, fine. Don't believe me. I, I got nothing to sell here. So I, um, I'm going around, I'm doing my um, pictures, I'm taking all my measurements, I'm getting this feeling like I am being followed. And I turn around, there's nobody there. But it's the creepiest feeling because I'm all alone in this house. Then I finish my work, I get back to my office, 
I start looking at, you know, for comps for, you know, properties that are comparable to this. And I've done all my adjustments and I've, I've, you know, done all my calculations and um, tried to find any problems with the property, tried to adjust for it. And I just can't figure out why this property is coming in about $30,000 less than where it should be. And I'm calculating over and over and I'm double checking. And um, finally, I, I call the um, selling agent and I said, you know, was this thing a arm's length transaction or, you know, was it interfamily? Is there some reason why it didn't, you know, why the, the listing price is not or why the selling price is not where it should be. And, and this woman gives me this attitude, like I should have known this, but she's like, well, you do know that the seller killed himself in the basement, right? <laughs> you do know, I was like, no, how would I know that? That's not public information. <laughs> but sure enough, you know, that's, that's my ghost story. You know, I had this feeling I had been followed all around and I guess in some way I, I certainly had. Uh, one of our friends, uh, Raven Caldera, uh, is a professional shaman and he will sometimes, uh, he's called in to do a spiritual look and sometimes cleansing over a house before people will buy it to find out if there's going to be a problem. Well, if you're a real estate person, can you tell us, Can and I know that some uh, localities have rules that you have, if there's ghosts, you have to disclose it. What do you know no. about that? Nope, nope, nope. No, nope. Nope. no, absolutely not. That's one of those things that people always feel like, oh yeah, you should tell, you know, you should be able to disclose that. Cause if I bought a haunted house, I'd want to know. And, and, you know, what if I wanted to buy a haunted house and this house isn't haunted and I got chipped out of my ghost, you know, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's no law that says you have to disclose that. And a lot of people feel very indignant about that, but the fact is you can't prove this in a court of law. So uh -huh. You know, I, I, are you going to sue me if your ghost isn't there or you don't sense the ghost that was bothering me all this time? You know, there, there's just, there's no way that you can consistently enough prove that, that somebody's going to be able to put that into a law. Yeah, like the Amityville house, the people who bought it afterwards felt nothing. And that was taken as evidence that it wasn't. Um, oh, yeah, so, it was all a fraud you know. because, you know, you didn't have the ghost or maybe the ghost got cleared out. And so I got chipped out of my ghost and I was going to make money with that ghost by, you know, <laughs> having haunted ghost tours or whatever, you know. Well, uh, one of the things that is often written uh, about pe people, especially you see this in kitchens, is uh, ghosts don't seem to like ren uh, like renovation. Uh, as Joe was saying, they. They don't like it when you change the furniture around. They they don't want you to change out their kit, their sinks and their other things. And so they so we're waiting because uh, we are looking at going back to what used to be the Hudson Valley Conference Center, and I think it's now called Vacation Village, where the Dutchess County Paranormal people did a ghost hunt, and um, when we were there last time, and and we couldn't use the uh, pool because some kid had drowned in it the previous summer and so it was still closed and uh, so yeah there might might have been <clears throat> ghosts and there certainly the ghost hunters thought there that in believed that they had found evidence of ghosts so but ghosts don't like reservation renovation so we're waiting to see whether this is going to stir up the vote ghosts or whether it's going to have them say oh screw this we don't want to be here anymore um <clears throat> that's a that's that's a thing that that might happen uh okay now I'm so I, I see one of the questions is you know are, is are there disclosure laws about deaths and properties and and the answer to that is also no and that's uh, why you have to do your own due diligence because there's no in fact there's a lot of um reasons why sellers would not want to disclose that you know so they have a lot of motivation to not say anything. And, and again, you know, you may be haunted as heck and the next person who comes along doesn't sense anything. 
you know, they're just not sensitive at, in the least. So for those reasons, you can't, you know, mandate somebody to be disclosed. And that's why you really have to do your own due diligence because there's just no other way to do that. You know, you, you're not going to have any law that says, you know, you have to be told. Yeah. And okay. Hey, and, and I see that Michelle has another story. That's cool. Yeah, I actually have tons of them. I used to live in a haunted house, as I said earlier. I'm sorry about that. One of the things is at the bottom of my street was a cemetery and there was a, on the original land, there was a, um, a creek that went up being pushed underground. So it flowed under the, the floorboards of where my house was. So the ghosts would wander up and down through the houses. And it, it made things pretty spooky for a kid uh, who used to play in the basement. We just like run racing up the stairs. We'd see these different people. Um, the, the cool thing was years later, I talked to my neighbor who lived next door. And I said, hey, when you were a little kid, did you have a problem with the basement? It's like, yeah, these weird people kept wandering through. So we kept getting the, you know, that impression of various people just walking along the, the basement level, but along the creek bed. So that's cool. Uh, Sean, did, what, what did you want to add? Actually, I realized I do have one. This took place a few years, actually more than a few years back at a 12th night that they were holding here in Connecticut. Um, basically, I'd set up to do readings. And as typical with 12th nights these days, nobody was going to the vendors. So mm -hmm. I pulled out my beads and I started to just you know, meditate because one way to kill time. And while I was meditating, I wasn't so deep in trance, I was unaware. There was this odor like garbage that went by me. Then it went back the other way. And then it went back a third time. Then it stopped for a moment. And then it moved off faster again. Now this was on a, in a middle school that was in Sandy Hook, Connecticut on the grounds of the old Fairfield Hills insane asylum because that's the only way to describe it. Which was one of those old snake pit style um, asylums from the you know they closed it but they never nobody ever really bothered to clean the place out i don't think it was a ghost i think it was something considerably lower on the supernatural food chain but given the odor i'm thinking it was probably some sort of parasite Me, yeah, please yeah what did you do next um well when i came back up i asked the one of the other vendors if they'd been hauling garbage back and forth because it was like, you really need to do that in the middle of an event? And the answer was no, there's no, been nobody here since court started. And so I'm not quite sure what it, what it is, but I'm sure I'm not gonna get let in to deal with it. <laughs> and, but I saw in the chat that you have cleaned other houses. Yes. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't think the, um, Regional school district will let me go in with a 55 gallon drum of war water and another one of Forthy's vinegar and just hose the place down. Do you think aspersion would work? Yeah, pretty much. Just, you know, just a little not hosing. <laughs> uh, this is a pretty big place. <laughs> go through a lot of, of This is one of those regional Setters. They've got a high school, they've got a middle school, and they've got an elementary school. It was a massive complex, Chippehan. Oh, absolutely okay. massive. And they've since turned it into public um, buildings, but yeah. he's right. There's, there's all kinds of tunnels, and they're all connected, and it's just pretty infamous around oh, here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, somebody asked me, it's like ghosts, they don't, you mean they, ghosts don't throw you up against the wall? And I've only spoken to one person who was thrown up against a wall by a ghost. And he was somebody who was a shaman. And he went with a bunch of idiot ghost hunters who went to <clears throat> do ghost hunting in a haunted asylum. And they went to the, uh, 
the uh, room where the, the dangerous people were supposed to be. And he was indeed thrown up against the wall. And he said, okay, guys, you're on your own. It's dangerous to be here. I'm leaving. And, um, and he did. And then they decided that they were going to leave too. This is not a sport. <laughs> it's a, it's a, some people see colors more clearly. Some people perceive ghosts more clearly. It is, uh, I think uh, ordinary people are more likely to see ghosts when the ghost puts an effort in, what, say for when they're just died and your grandmother comes to say goodbye or whatever. I think it's easier for ghosts to uh, reach you when you're asleep and therefore not wearing your body either. <laughs> but for, pe for some people see it totally waking and they don't even know that they're not talking to a solid person. They don't, they, they're not transparent. They're not ghostly. They're not half there. They're just a person. And then they look around and they're not there and they had no way of getting away that fast. And then somebody says, no, no, they died four hours ago or something. So <clears throat> that's a, another thing that, that, that happens with ghosts. Uh, anybody else got any stories? Because if, I've got another one, which is interesting. Ah, Bob. Yes. Go on. I have uh, had an interesting time with the dead. I mean, before I was trained, I just feel something was amiss in a certain place and I just didn't like it. I become enraged and I accidentally cleared my, cousin's house he had loaded with ghosts she loved it and she's right near an indian burial ground and she was doing a religious ceremony there and i got them all out and i found out when i had a near-death experience why i went to a bar once i have a bunch of because i walked past it and i saw them tossing around a little guy so i go in and i remember i gave some kind of nasty threat and everybody got up and ran out the back door and i'm wondering what the hell's going on the near-death experience, I got to repeat that experience, and I got to see all of the people lined up behind me, all tribesmen, all, all dead relatives, and I would have ran. But there's... Uh, so so it's got you and what army? Uh, them. <laughs> yeah, it really. I'm well, I'm, I've been pretty well protected, and I've used that to good form to help. I mean, when we went to the Highland Games in New York, we, we stayed the Holiday Inn. And I'm in there and I'm reading, listening to a CD, dance, sound asleep. And I thought somebody threw about a 10 pound weight on my lap. And I'm looking around, I don't see anything, but I noticed the covers went down. After a while, I figured out what it was. It was a cat, a ghost of a cat. And I couldn't figure out what was the rest was there. But after we left, I had a, an uncle uh, that passed go and take care of the cat. Found that the owners died and left him there. And when the cat kind of came to consciousness of being dead, the, the owners weren't there. So my uncle took him home. But it's it's an interesting trip. There's good places around two here. I mean, one that surprised me, I went to uh, the Teddy Roosevelt in Salem. And it's right at it butts a graveyard. And they have pictures of coffins that actually came in through the walls during a rainstorm. <laughs> Before. and the owner showing all these pictures of orbs and everything we went toward the place and i go upstairs there's this big room and i open it up and i look in and there's a wedding ceremony and it's looked really nice but everybody's dressed in old clothes which would kind of seem kind of odd and i had two people staring at me they were like standing almost at parade rest just guarding everything and those are two uncles of the bride and groom and the whole party was ghosts it was cold yeah don't i was i was happy there i apologized and left but an Not interesting so. ride yeah if you are closer in frequency and and are able to see what's going on in their on their channel <laughs> uh then then you're going to see things that other people aren't seeing uh, a lot of shaman learn to tune in to other frequencies. I have a shaman friend who goes on her days off to uh, old con 
uh, uh, battle civil war battlegrounds and send sends the uh, helps old soldiers who've gotten stuck cross over it apparently is very disorienting to wake up dead if you haven't got a strong grounding or if you internally disagree with what your culture tells you is what you're supposed to do when you die. Uh, Griffin. Yeah, um, you talk about how ghosts don't like renovation. Um, the house we live in was built in the late 20s classic for the neighborhood here, bungalow style uh, on the working man's side of town. And I've always felt that at some level it was cursed because there are some aspects of the house that any workman who comes in to work on that part of the house, it's like, you know, you know it's like being burned alive. You just can't get anything to work. And I know that one of the motivations for the original, uh, well, the owners that had it when we moved in was that the second floor bathroom this was plumber's hell. Uh, wife's father was a master plumber. And then there's uh, whoever converted it from a one-family home to a two-family home in the 80s probably caused all the trouble and was rewarded by things like when they did some rework in the kitchen, he brought the pipes up from the basement for the hot and cold water and got them reversed. And we didn't realize this until the landlord, the current landlord, was obliged to replace the kitchen faucet. And nobody realized those pipes were reversed. So now we have cold on the left and hot on the right. And even after the current owner bought the place, she still, uh, the second floor bathroom was a money pit. So I don't know if there is some ghost that when when they started messing around with all, this whole style house, you know, maybe he was a plumber or something. But we still get leaks from the second floor shower. Yeah. So it's After just like many repairs. Yeah, it's like you can't win. Well, uh, one, one thing that I have found out, uh, aside from paranormal stuff. In 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 a way, is that uh, most at home deaths these days take place in the bathroom. Uh, that's where people have a tendency to die. They uh, um, you get constipated, you have a heart attack on the toilet. Um, other than slipping and falling and things like that, my husband uh, had a stroke. His his final uh, brain brain bleed was in the bathroom. They took him out to the hospital where he technically was declared but uh the energy in that bathroom was disrupted so we called in raven caldera who cleared it mm. and the minute he said it's gone and the pipes under the sink broke and so we had to bring in a plumber to fix the pipes but the he'd taken care of the energy part so um yeah there is apparently some kind of connection between Right. Ghostly activities. And, and I am not aware that anybody I mean, died here because when I pulled the property record to see what this place was all about, um, this was one of these cases where the original owner who had the place built in the late 20s was a local guy. He owned a, a gas station repair shop in town that was fairly well known. And um, a couple of years before the house was remodeled, you see a couple of close together $1 sales. And it looks like he sold it to his sons because the net last name is the same. Hmm. And um, they held on to it to 2012. But um, I'm not aware that anybody died there, but who knows what happened in that bathroom. But uh, yeah, it was like, it, it did put me on edge there. I said, you know, I don't think I'd want to own this place if I could. Because well, there, there, there's just something wrong with it. Well, a lot of ghosts uh, that are seem to be apparitions do roam from room to room. 
And so, uh, I mean, we all of the people that are the the, the ghosts, the disembodied, uh, that are seen roaming from room to room, or the footsteps you hear going from room to room. Ah, yes, uh, Robin, uh, unmute and tell us things. Uh, I got one story. My my whole situation is a little bit different from most people's. I actually invite them in and encourage them to help them out. One of the funniest ones I had, I was at a friend's store, uh, her shop, and in, doing a, um, she was just like interviewing me to get to, to do a, a work with me. Um, and I felt somebody patted me on the right knee. I said, oh, this is cute. And then they patted me on the left knee. And I looked at my friend. I said, this is cute. I think I'm going to take this one home with me. She said, yeah, we have lots of them here. That one I brought home. I brought them this home, too. But I brought that one home with me. That very night, at 1030 at night, I have a kind of like a closet storage on my balcony. It got pounded on repeatedly loud at 1030 at night. And then it stopped. I said, okay, this is not going to work. I got neighbors downstairs. I've been in an apartment. Uh, it started. She she started pounding on it again. I said, "House rules: you pound on the doors at a ten thirty night. You have to leave. I got certain rules and conditions. We cannot scare the neighbors." After that, everything was fine, except for the ones who decided they figured out how to work the on-off volume to control of my TV. Oh, I had an oh, old cathode ray tube with a, a a push button. The TV would go off and on repeat. I said. Funny, you guys, I've tried to watch. The next one who turns off the TV gets evicted. And then the TV is left alone after that. But it, it's hilarious. I've got so many coming in and out. Um, it's just standard. But the TV thing was the one that really cracked me up. That is that that sounds a lot of people don't seem to know that you can talk to them, speak, speak uh strongly to them. Another story that I heard that is different than, than many other varieties is that um, some friends of ours moved into an old house and they had a three-year-old at the time. And the three-year-old uh, mentioned that there were ladies that would come into the bedroom at night and say good night to him and, and were nice to him. And that was, that was cool. That didn't bother them. But then he started getting very upset because apparently two of the old ladies had lived together in the house and died together. And one of them didn't live with the, the other two. And they, neither of them could see each other. The one lady couldn't see the other two ghosts and the two ghosts couldn't see the single ghost. And both of them, all of three of them would talk to the three-year-old. And then they started telling him, no, it's not nice to lie. You mustn't lie. There are only two of us here or there are only three of us here. And no three-year-old is emotionally uh, ready to argue to adults. And so his parents had to move the ghosts on, even though up, other than that, he liked talking to the ladies, but they couldn't convince, they didn't see the ghosts and uh, because kids are a lot, usually a lot more sensitive to ghosts, but they could evict them. And, uh, but just the idea, okay, I didn't know that there was a kind that ghosts can't necessarily see each other. You've just figured, well, they're over on the other side. They're all, all going to be able, no, not necessarily. They, they may be on different channels, <clears throat> but, uh, I always thought that was an interesting thing and, and brings up questions about you know, the part of, uh, your personality that gets left behind. Um, so and are there any other stories, any other last things we're going to say? Because we're getting close to the end. Amber has one. Oh, good, Amber. Oh, well, it's not a ghost story, but it was about the bathroom. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so I was asked to appraise a property in Bridgeport. Um, there was this beautiful antique house, and I mean beautiful I, I looked at the outside of it and it's just one of those, those things that you look at this house and you think, Oh my God, you're so pretty. What a beautiful little house you are. You just want to like go hug it because it's so gorgeous. And yet it was condemned and I couldn't figure out why. 
Um, you know, I, I was only allowed to do a drive by on this one. I, I wasn't allowed to go inside because they said it was condemned. But to me, from the outside, it looked perfect. And it turns out that the last owner had been this little old lady who had a little bathroom leak in the sink upstairs on the, the top floor. Just a tiny little leak. OK, but this thing had never been fixed in decades. So eventually what had happened was this tiny little leak that she didn't even bother fixing because it was so small. It destabilized the wall. Oh, and the wall shifted onto the sewer main and broke it. <laughs> and so the whole lower level of the house was filled with sewage. And that is how the house became condemned. It, there was just no saving it. Ugh. The story is make sure you fix those tiny little leaks. <laughs> those tiny little leaks. Well, that, that is a, a sad, sad uh, way to, to end up this thing, but, but yeah, in, enjoy your ghosts. Most of them are, are, perfectly good roommates if sometimes annoying uh remember as robin said you can lay down the rules of the house it's your excuse me i'm the one that's currently paying the mortgage <laughs> it may have been your house but but i guess that's going to be it we hope this is where i remind you to uh think about tell your friends about otherworldly and tell them about the conference which will be in november and uh see you next week uh I have my list of other what's coming up. I don't have it right here. So I'm going to hit the stop recording button. And uh, thank you all for, for joining us and sharing your stories. This was a fun one.